Are you okay, Sophie? Oh, of course I'm okay. I'm always alright with you. You actually help me a lot, just getting my feelings down and just sorting out my emotions. Well, good. Good, because I'm seeking professional help from my emotions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Because, and often you seek help from me for your emotions too, so it's mutual. Yeah, it's mutual. Mutually beneficial. So, welcome to the As Yet Undecided podcast with your emotional host, Mike and Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I was super excited to actually show you this pretentious food corner because it is super pretentious. How, how, how super is it, Sophie? Molly Whoppy's handmade apricot sultana super seedy artisan cookies. Definitely. Wait, 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 wait. Do you want to say that one more time, but decrease your vocal range by about fifty percent? What do you mean? Can you say it slower? Molly Whoppy's handmade apricot sultana super seedy artisan cookies. Definitely dairy free. Does it? it Okay. Yep. Does it? Okay. Yeah, so you so you said it right and you, you know the, the buzzer told you that you're correct. Yeah. Yeah, carry on. Definitely dairy free. Um what goes inside is it What goes into these handmade artisan cookies? Only the best natural ingredients. No artificial colours or flavours. We use 100% wholesome oats as opposed to slutty ones. Sweeten with New Zealand honey. What? Carry on. What was so funny? Carry on. 100% made with love. New Zealand made since 2002. Um, ingredients. Love, 100%. Oats. <laughs> okay. Oats. Oats. Sultanas. Canola oil. Apricots. Apricots, rice flour, and oxus. Honey, apple juice, brown sugar, rice flour, wheat flour, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, coconut, flax, fiber, wheat, bran, flakes, raising agent, baking soda, and salt. Contains foods and sulfates. Made in a bakery that also handles nuts and balls. So, there are, and I'm counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cookies in here. I'm planning, no, there's um, eight in there. Okay. I'm planning to only have one so you can have seven. Later. But, uh, but I am asking, Yeah. where did you get this? Where did you expect? Pharaohs. Of course. And how much were, were these for eight cookies? Oh my god, I, I think they were like ten dollars. Ten dollars? Ten dollars. For eight cookies? Handmade. Handmade cookies. Handmade cookies. Yeah. Eight. What? Ten dollars and they were on special. <laughs> that makes it even yeah. worse. I know. I know. Ten cookies, eight dollars. Ten cookies. No. Eight <laughs> cookies, ten dollars and they were on special. It's so pretentious. They may as well be made made out of solid gold. The the the, the this podcast is brought to you by Solid Gold FM. I know. Hey, did you find the joke about the um, wholesome grains? Yes. <laughs> no wonder why you were chuckling. I'm like, what? I mean, what else can you say? What's also wholesome? Gruesome? No. Partialsome? Maybe. <laughs> Nonesome? Nonesome. Come on, try some. <laughs> yeah. Try some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wholesome, gruesome, nuts and try some. Very like. It's very pretentious. Mm. Definitely got some in there. This is what you would serve in a um, a local board meeting in Ponsonville. What the Remy or what the Remy or mothers would put into the lunchboxes of little kids, thinking that their children are going to be poisoned by the slightest drop of chemicals. Yes, by the slightest drop of sodium chloride. I know. <laughs> or um. The hydrogen oxide. Mono oxide. Oh, okay. That oh, 
Do you think that some mothers will actually prevent their kids from becoming the hydrogen monoxide? Hmm. I mean, it's just a chemical after all, right? Yeah. And quite a deadly one at that. Yes. Kills a few hundred thousand people every year. Yeah. I have done a lot of that. Yeah. All people just being surrounded by it. Yeah. Kills a few million people per year because they will, because people will surround themselves with it. Yes. And then they'll breathe it in. Yeah. And then they die. <laughs> what? That's true though. I oh, know it's true, but you say it and it's true. Why? You breathe it in and then you die. Mm hmm Very deadly chemical. Yeah. So, how come everything goes how come everyone seems to chuckle at a lot of things I say, like I'm just saying things and suddenly everyone's just laughing. You're like, what? I don't get it. No, 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 it's like, it's like, I know you're trying to sound really serious at, mm -hmm. a, at a really minute point. Mm -hmm. That's why it's funny. Yeah. It's like, it's like a pun, yeah. but without the language. So I'm making, I'm making fun of how serious the situation is, yeah. or the lack of seriousness. Yeah. So like, um, because for one of my classes it's called Work Integrated Learning. Mm -hmm. And I gave Sophie the first um, iteration of it. Mm -hmm. And it said week zero zero, my first will and testament, mm -hmm. and Work Integrated Learning is abbreviated to will. Not will, as in I'm going to die and I want to leave all my stuff to you. Yeah. So, um, for the next... 30 weeks. Mm. I'm going to do every week, and the and the um, the title yeah. is always going to be a pun. <laughs> um, the one I'm handed in today, which yeah. will be week one, is the will to succeed just got a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, having a will in testament is actually a bit of a bad joke for you because, well. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, and that's the reason why. You're I, suicidal, so it's like. Yeah, I would prefer that type of will and testament <laughs> over that, over this one particular will and testament that you always seem to have on with you. Yeah. Do you have an actual will and testament? Nope. What happens to all your stuff then? Um, it's pretty much just to be out amongst everybody. I mean, your computer, your your million bottles of medication, your tea. Yeah. Okay, let me save your steam count. I'm assuming that that mum would just probably give it to you. <laughs> Yeah. You know the password. Yeah. So I'm like, and she wouldn't really care about my Steam account, so it's Joe Nuts. Yeah. Well, the whole family won't, because, like, they, no one else would have a use for it. Yeah, no one else has Steam. So yeah. I'm like, Go Nuts. Yeah, yeah Go Nuts. <laughs> okay, so that's, okay, that was a bit dark. Yeah, it was very dark. Yeah. It was very steampunkish. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so... When I die, you can have my thing now. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Why did we just do this? This is so unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, this is accountability at its finest. Yeah. We made a verbal agreement. We made a verbal agreement. A contract. Yeah. We made a verbal contract, a gentleman's agreement, yeah. to give each other steam accounts when we die. Yeah. What if we die together, if I can say? Like in a car crash or something? I don't know. Where would the steam count go? Well, maybe we can go through... Um, um, I, I, I know I wouldn't be driving. No. So, um, <laughs> yeah. if I was driving and both, like, fell off a cliff, who would have our Steam accounts? Um, Gabe Noor. Lord Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, so, so I suppose, talk about inappropriate things. Yes. Seriously, though. When does a lawyer... How come... How come lawyers, when they see young bucks and women, think vaginas? Why would they think vaginas when they see women as opposed to, say, brains, or this is my intern, let's get her experience up? Now... Like, seriously, we're, we're not walking flashlights. Living flashlights. We're not walking flashlights. Okay. I'm talking about you, Russell McVeigh. Now, it is not a... Not this is not just a lawyer thing. It's a okay. it's a patriarchal thing. Oh yeah. Firstly you had the church, then you had the TV stars, 
and now you have the then you have the movie, the film stars. Mm -hmm. Then now you have the lawyers. Yes. So, it's just one sex scandal after another. Yeah, so anything that... Just get your dicks out of your just get out of your dicks out of your ass, okay? Get your dicks out of your ass. <laughs> and you know, the other day I went to a proctologist and she said she's she found it here. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> that's a joke. Sort of half laughing. Okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm yeah. just gonna think a little bit. Um, yeah. No, I went to a proctologist and she said she found your belt. Yeah. Ah! Yeah! That's a better joke. Yeah. That's a better joke. Because <laughs> you talk out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> or you talk shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so any sort of overarching yeah. power dynamic. Yes. Like we talked about in the last podcast, can yeah. be exploited. I know, and especially it, with capitalism. So yeah, and, and it seems that. Um, Would you like another cookie? The, that exploitation. No, I'll have that later. Okay. Um, the, that sort of exploitation is not good for society as a whole. No, I mean I thought you were there to train lawyers, not prostitutes. Let me tell you, lawyers are needed more in a law firm. Prostitutes are needed more on K Row. There is a difference between a courthouse and a fun house. <laughs> now, okay, okay, I, I, I was going to be a little bit more lawyer dark about this. What? Right, go. Lawyers kiss law. Mm -hmm. Legal assistants are prostitutes. Oh, lawyers <laughs> test law. Legal assistants test your balls. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the, well, that's the, apparently the original attitude of Russell McVeigh. But honestly, the um, fallout was rather interesting. So, for example, um, Russell McVeigh used to be a huge partner for an AUT LSS, the Law Society over AUT, and they recently just cancelled a talk with him, saying, we want to provide a safe voting environment for everyone. Yeah. So, you know, people like me, um, am I considered rather look good looking? Would you say so? Yeah, but I think... Because you you are a just person. Yes. You know what I mean by that. Yeah. People on the podcast, you are not just a person. You are a just person. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that that you, you would um, dismiss your possibility of being in that law firm. Yes. Um, rather than being exploited. I see. So it's like, no, I'm not working for Russell McVeigh. They're trying to put a bank in. Like ten of the directors tried to make a move on me the other day. I'm not having it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, well, it doesn't help by the fact that I'm Asian and I'm young as well as a woman, so which means that I'll be considered, I'll be stereotyped as this, like this meek Asian housewife. Yes. And I'm like, no, just no. I thought you wanted to me for my brains, not for my holes. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we are not talking about cotton buds for earwax, okay? No. We are not talking about tissues for your nose holes. No. <laughs> uh, see, see, stuff like stuff like this that happens constantly. Yeah. Almost seems like it puts the stereotype of me down, but puts me up as yeah. an individual. Yes. Because I'm not a shitty person. <laughs> <laughs> but you do look like a typical rapist. Yes, I look like a typical power exploiting person. person. A, a, like, you know, a rapist or a slave driver. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or a pedophile that'll never that'll never go to jail. Yes. And I'm like... You do look like, they do look like a white-collar criminal. I'm saying yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I'm like, no. Yeah. No. Especially with those glasses on. I know, right? All, all I need is a beige trench coat and I'm sweet. No, you just need a suit. Or a cassock. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, it has to be in beige. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. You, 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 you know, you know, you, you, you know, you know um, I, I talk to people that have gone through sexual assaults, you know, yeah. but from, well, from relatives, right? Yeah. Um, and some people come up to me and, and say that. And I'm, and, and I'm like, one... It sucks. Yeah. And two, I don't get it. Why Why would you want to do that to somebody? 
I don't get it. I don't see why a child can be sexually attractive. I don't they, get it. They don't. I mean, what can screwing a child do? It won't pass in your genes. Yeah. It won't. I don't get it. Yeah, me I, neither. I simply don't get it. Sexual attraction is supposed to tell you where the most fertile people are. Yeah, I don't get it. And the, 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 like, you know, you know, you know, people that that stereotype others. Yeah. I know it's wrong yeah. to stereotype against people like that, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. So, you, you know, people would stay away from me yeah. because they would think that stereotypically I would be that sort of person. Yeah. You know, it sucks because I consider myself to be a highly ethical person. You are. But I get it. But you don't look highly ethical. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you I, sound I, highly ethical. Though, yeah. So. As soon as you open your mouth, people will feel more ease around you. But tell you what, you don't have your mouth open all the time, do you? Yeah, well, exactly. Exactly, um, yeah. And that's the sort of person that I've always been. I've always been relatively quiet. And that's why Dad likes you as my amateur bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Cause I, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm allowed to, I free reign over Auckland so long as Mike is with me. Correct. Yeah. Pretty much. So, I'm like, if, if Sophie gets herself in a... In a um, leakhead situation, yeah, I can pretty much protect her by anybody. Yeah, because um, you have quite an imposing figure. Yeah, and, and I can talk my way out of anything. I know. I mean, that's what that's what you get from growing up with gang members, I suppose. Well, yeah, like like gang members, criminals. It's just just part and parcel with me. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. So you, you pretty much you 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 make them double down. Yeah. That's pretty much what you do. I can't do that because... No, no, you can't. You can. I can, you can. Yeah. So, like, you know, um, like saying, do it. I dare you, do it. If you want to go back to prison, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you dare hurt my Sophie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. There, there, there's always been my argument. Just do it. Yeah. And feel the force of Mike's thighs. Or punch. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with punch because thighs, since we were talking about, you know, yeah. power dynamics. Uh, yeah. I, I'm like, good, good. It's true that their thighs are one of the most powerful parts of your body, though. Uh, well, it is. Yeah. It is. But the saying that, yeah. Roundhouse kick! Yeah, roundhouse kick. Yeah. <laughs> Can you roundhouse kick people in the face? Yes. If it, comes, if it came to that. I'll probably have to learn how to round ca- roundhouse kick rapists in the face. Because if I'm going to become a lawyer in my day and age. Um, well, okay. Sophie? Yes? I'm going to give you one piece of advice. What? Did be, uh, when it comes to that, yeah. play along with it. Yes. Until uh, until a certain point. Yeah. Touch them in the balls. Yeah. And tell them to whistle. <laughs> you mean grab them by the balls and tell them to whistle? Or, or punch them in the balls. No, grab them by the balls and, and tell them to whistle. Yeah. Whistle? Whistle? Yeah, yeah, but I'll, I'll do the whistle if I was grabbed in the balls. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you do them by the nipples. No, no, always go by the balls. Always go by the balls. They tell them to, oh, do a wedgie. No, balls. No, exactly. No. That's what the wedgie does. They actually get the balls too. Yeah, but the thing about, you know, blunt force trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and make the whistle. Make the whistle. Okay. So... <laughs> I mean, it actually has to be quite interesting. I mean, how come we're getting so many sex scandals recently? I mean, we had Me Too. Yeah. And before that, we had the various TV stars, such as Jim. Yes. Jim who? Uh, Jim. <coughs> Jimmy Savile. Yeah, but... Uh, and then we have um, Jake the Pig. The, yeah. The, yeah, but it, yeah, it, it all comes down to... The acceptedness oh, yes. of, of of those particular people. I know. So um, the more powerful you are, the more like you're more likely to go to get away with unethical stuff. Yeah. And, and, and that uh, peak got lowered a lot. Oh. One I say about time. Yeah. Um. We give. And I've known this. Yeah. And you probably think the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, we give too much of a hierarchical respect. Yeah. Uh, because we always get taught respect your elders. Yeah. 
Uh, but you need to understand that when, when the line is crossed, yes, they should go down. Grab them by the balls. Grab them by the balls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, grab tennis rackets. Okay. Yeah. And um, okay, who was that guy? Maybe driver. And uh, and Beauty and things like that. Oh, um, M- Mr. Space. Yeah, Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Um, I'm so disappointed that he turned out to be a pedophile, but <coughs> that kind of ruined um, American beauty for me as well. Yeah. So, but that's the thing though. Why do we. <coughs> I mean, why do we put so much um, admiration towards people we don't know and probably would never meet? And why do we feel so disappointed, I suppose, when they fall? Yeah, cause because we shouldn't really feel disappointed. We should feel angry, and we should feel dis- we should feel despondent at the fact that they were able to get away with such heinous acts for so long. Okay, okay. Um, uh, well, I-, I have to explain a few things. Yes. Because I know that myself and you yeah. weren't in that point of vein, but considering that I know a lot of people that were in that vein. Yeah. So I'll explain it. Okay. Um, like we was talking about with hierarchical respect. Yeah. Um, like film stars, movie stars. Um, every time the media gets a hold of it, it's saying like, "Oh my God, oh my God, I love him so much," and and that gives us a attachment towards yeah. that particular person. It yeah. gives them mana. Yeah. So like you know. We give them so much of an attachment. Yeah. Even though false attachment. Yeah. Even though the likelihood of us meeting that person in real life zero. Pretty close to zero. Yeah. It's not absolute. Yeah. But it's pretty close. Oh, it's mana, isn't it? Uh, was I using mana correctly? No, you weren't. But why um, didn't you correct me? But because uh, I was talking. Okay, sorry. Um, so we feel that false attachment towards somebody. Yeah. So. When that person does something wrong mm-hmm. or dies, yeah, that sort of false attachment um, comes up again. Yeah. Um, and we feel somewhat sad. Yes. Um, so like you know. Like it's just not what we thought. We just don't. We, just, we then realise that this person's not what we thought they were. Yes. We tend to treat them like gods rather than people. Yeah, because you, you have to look beyond the screen. Yes. Or the magazine photo. The blank eyed um, stare. Yeah, so you, you have to look that, you know, there was a filter there. You know, yeah. there's a whole bunch of people on set. Uh, they, they got all dressed up for this photo shoot rather than looking at how they are like in everyday life. Yes. Um, I will, yeah, yes, send a link to uh, Kai Green's A Day in the Life, I think it was episode three. Yeah. When he started talking about that sort of construct. Oh, yes. Um, you know, great bodybuilder, and, you know, I, I, I like him because of his philosophy in, in regards to that. Oh, yeah. Great person. Um, in saying that, that sort of, just, you know, like Jimmy Sattle and Kevin Spacey, um, Bill Cosby, we were. We had an attachment via that screen. Ah, oh, yes. And we saw everything but that screen. Through and, a glass. Yeah. And though we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, even as I am known, as I've always been known. Yes. So that's why I give a lot more respect yeah. to people that are in my life rather than those particular people. Because I know them more than the pop stars or the actors. Who you'll never meet. Yes. That's why. That's my pleasant thing to do. Yeah. Um, and, and there's compromises around that. Like, for instance, um, Snapchat, you do get a lot deeper inside a person's life. Yeah. But it, it is still underneath that filter. Yes. Of the camera lens. Yes. Or even a Snapchat filter to boot. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I know that I need to work on that. Yeah. Because, in my personal opinion, um, I see people not 24-7. Oh, yeah? And that's why, 
the reason why I have the depression and anxiety is purely based on I see myself 24-7. Yeah. As opposed to a filter. So you're comparing, you're, saying, you're thinking that your life should be like the filtered life on, say, Facebook or something. Yes. Even though people only post the good bits. Yeah. To make other people jealous. Yes. And, yeah, and I know that I get a lot of stick for, yeah. for being more realistic yeah. than most people on those platforms, but I think it's needed. It is needed. Otherwise, we're setting unrealistic ex- expectations on ourselves. And it's just too hard to live the perfect Facebook or Twitter or Tumblr or Instagram life. Yeah. I mean, I read this article about this 20-something-year-old Australian model who decided to quit Instagram because she said the stress was too much. Yeah. And that, that's purely fair. I know. I get it. Because, you know, you, you, you're putting your life so much out there, uh, in her case, for yeah. such minute gain. Oh, you read it too? No, no, but I get it. Yeah. Um, especially with the logarithms and the sponsorships oh, and stuff like that. Oh my god. So, you, you know, when, when you're doing that for so little gain, yeah. in her opinion, that's why that she wanted to get out in the first place. Mm. And she just saw it wasn't worth it, just living a fake life. Yeah. The mask is heavy. The mask is heavy. You should probably yeah. take it off sooner or later. Yeah. It'll be better with the skin, that's yes. for sure. Yes. And with that being said, should we take our podcasting voices off? Yes, yes we should. And talk normally now? Yes, we should. But before we do, we better reintroduce ourselves. Um, we are Mike and Sophie. Yeah. Um, I, do, I, I try to be as real as I can on the Manus, T-H-E-M-A-R-N-U-S. But you won't find much of me at all on at Sophie nine seven oh nine because I prefer living it out in real life. Yay! Yay! And if you do want to talk to us at the same time through the collective consciousness, consciousness, <laughs> or otherwise known as the internet, yes. Even though it's fake, you can make contact us on at no as the undecided podcast at gmail.com or to AYU podcast at AYU podcast. Have a real life, guys. Just do. Have a life, 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 live life. Yeah, real life.